All right, Randy, are we, are we live? We're live on YouTube, yeah. All right, uh, call the meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. We'll start with the roll call. Alderman Donnie is here. Alderman Bellotto. Here. Alderman Klinkster. Here. Alderman Johnson. Here. And Alderman Alexander. Alderman Alexander, absent, all right. Approval of minutes, I'll have them at our next meeting. I haven't had a chance to, to transcribe them yet. Uh, citizen comments, I did not receive any comments from members of the public. Uh, moving on, first is CalSAG Trail Insurance Policy Proposal. I know Carrie was involved in this and Topeka, so if either one uh, want to explain what's going on here, the floor is, the floor is yours, thank you. Yes, hi committee members. So our policy is up for renewal for the CalSAC Trail. And traditionally, it probably would have been the same dollar amount that we have been paying in prior years. But since the bike trail was added, it's just recently opened, it kind of changed our exposure. And what happened was uh, the, the broker who was working with us, Mr. Tom Collins, he presented our profile to a number of different carriers. And basically all of them declined to cover us, including the company that's currently covering us now on the trail. So we asked, we presented a couple of different options that we tried to, uh, that we were trying to use to try to get the premium dollar amount lower than what it is, because it's a significant increase. So we proposed um, having a higher deductible between a range of 5,000 to 20,000. That didn't really bring the coverage down. We asked him to see if other communities who share the trail with us will be willing to um, buy coverage like as a joint uh, as a joint policy. And he said that most municipalities would not be able to do that because they're on under like a master insurance program. So this is kind of where we're at right now. Um, they gave us three different options <clears throat> when we uh, asked him to present the different premium, the different deductible options, but the different deductible options really didn't bring the premium down much. So uh, where we at right now is for a five thousand deductible is about eighteen thousand dollars annually, and we're required to have this insurance under our lease agreement with MWRD. All right, I, Alderman Donnie, have some questions. Sure, go ahead, Fred. All right, a um, couple questions. The trail, this portion of the trail was just completed, but the other portion's been there for over a year, uh, and if they didn't know about it, they didn't know about it, but. We don't own any of the land the trail sits on. It sits on MWRD land. I've never been a huge in favor of the lease that we have right now because it's a big burden of maintenance and liability onto us with very little return. Um, so I don't think there's a need for this unless someone can explain to me, maybe Carrie, why we need to do this. If MWRD owns the land, aren't they the ones that are liable for this? Otherwise, I'd like to table it because I'm not in favor of the lease, how it is written right now. I, I never came through the committee. Um, it was done, I know, many years ago, but I, I mean, I never was like broken down. A lot of questions I had that were never answered. Uh, the, all the debacle with the farm, how, can, how they can't be there. The boat racing stuff, I mean, that you're not allowed to use the waterfall park, but you can use it, but you can maintain it. But you, we got to tell you what you can do there and what you can't do there. You have to buy permit fees, even though you're leasing the land from us. Uh, just back and forth with MWRD, and it's left a bad taste in my mouth. And the entire CalSAG trail and, and CalSAG channels within my ward, and I still have a lot of answers, a lot of questions without any answers. So it's just another expense yeah. to see the reward we're getting back for this. I love the yeah. trail. All, the All these other towns have the trails too, but do they have to pay for separate insurance? I like that answer. I don't think they do. You know, it's MWRD land. We don't own the land. Yeah, Alderman yeah. Bernardo, um, those are those are great questions. So, from my understanding, um, the, it it is part of our lease requirement that we that we do have the policy insurance. That so that's why I, that that's the the amount of knowledge that I have as regards to those questions that, in regards to the lease. Uh, Alderman Bellato, this is uh, yeah, Carrie Horvath speaking. We we can approach the MWRD and ask them if they will accept a self-insurance certification from the municipality. The lease between the MWRD and the city when it was when it was negotiated, I don't I don't know when it was negotiated, but the lease itself it call, calls for uh, a minimum of 
I believe it's $3 million of liability coverage. And so that's why the policy is, uh, or the proposal is structured in the manner in which it is. It's, it's in the lease. That's all I can tell you. We, I know we don't own the property, but in, as a condition for allowing the construction of the trail on the property, the NWRD apparently required this insurance. It is a very significant policy, I will say that. And the, the premium <clears throat> what used to be under $5,000, but it is now jumped to $18,000. When I saw the proposal, I suggested that we at least possibly look at increasing the deductible, but that didn't bring it down very much. I believe Mark Miller may have a contact with the MWRD because he, he was involved when the circumstances and concerning the farm came up and perhaps he can uh, contact that individual to find out who we can talk to to see if we can self-insure on this because it is it's slightly under nineteen thousand dollars if I'm not mistaken. Is what the no, I, is. I, I agree, uh, Attorney Horvath. My my thing is the double standard. Um, my entire life, I grew up on Canal Street. Everybody on Canal Street plants crops and and anything they want on the canal property. No one ever says anything, but they kick Bios Farm off the property for doing something that's an organized endeavor for the community that gives out food to other parts of the community. But we keep allowing the people to grow on the land. I mean, we're insure, are we insuring the farms now that are on that land? It doesn't make any sense to me. And the, the waterfall park putting the liability of maintenance on us. I, I, I just want to renegotiate this entire lease, I think, because I think we, we got the bad end of the stick here. And, and it's we're in a quasi situation where they're responsible for lighting and the waterfalls, but we're responsible for the grass and bushes. But then if a log falls into the canal, we're responsible for up to the water's edge. We don't even have access to the water's edge. It's all fenced off and we're not allowed to go on there. So it's a lot of unanswered questions I have. And it's a constant struggle. Who's maintaining the property? They're saying they own it. They're saying we lease it. I mean, they're, they're, it depends who you talk to. So I'm uh, against paying the premium on this. I'm in favor of tabling it. I'd like to reopen the lease because I'm not thinking we're getting what we're meant to get out of this lease. And if there's something we need to restructure, I think we should go do that. If you tell me there's a legal reason why we need to do this right now, I'll, I'll listen to the advice of the attorney. Otherwise, I'm against paying anything more for this lease until we need to renegotiate it. I don't know, uh, Alderman, I don't know when the premium uh, is when the current policy expires. My first involvement the with this. The current policy expires on the third. We got, we were granted an extension because we were still going back and forth trying to figure out what we actually had to have under the lease requirements. So uh, Mr. Miller did reach out to uh, Mr. Christopher Murray at MWRD. That's his direct contact there. And that contact told him that we were required to have general liability um, but we were able to self-insure for environmental only. We were able to self-insure for what? Um, en environmental. You... Environmental. Oh, okay. Well, that yeah. that really doesn't help us much. Um, yeah, absolutely. It is a condition of the lease at this point in time, uh, according to uh, Topeka. The only thing they would allow us to self-insure for is environmental issues. That doesn't help us with respect to the liability aspect, which is the bulk of which probably the bulk of the premium applies to that. Um, so unless the MWRD wants to release us from that responsibility, uh, at the premium is due, did you say the, the third Topeka? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Unfortunately. Tomorrow, we don't have any any leeway to just say we're not going to <clears throat> we're not going to pay the premium and not have insurance. They could they technically could default us under the lease if they cared to, and close the bike trail. I don't know if they do that, but they could say we're in default for failing to insure. Or they and could I, get a the, policy the lease, and then send us a bill. The lease that we have um, from curb to curb, water is edge, 
when it was explained to me, is, is independent of the CalSAG Trail. The lease we have is above and beyond. Um, the CalSAG Trail is built on a portion of the land that we lease, but it wasn't because, we didn't do the lease because of the CalSAG Trail. I think it was done to have more community use and freedom over the Waterfall Park and the open land along the canal on both sides. At least that was explained to me from one of the, I think it was Chris Murray from MWRD when I had questions about this last year. The trail never came mm -hmm. up in any conversations. I think the trail was already, they already agreed to allow the trail being built throughout their easement way before this lease even came about. So I, I'm not going to be in favor of it. I'm probably, uh, I don't know, I'm the only one here, but I just got a lot of questions and I, I want to reopen the lease to the negotiation. Uh, this is I'll, be happy to, I'll be happy to contact Mr. Murray, but I, I don't believe that he has any authority to change what's in the lease. He certainly can go to the, the water reclamation district and ask them or the, what they, the, the board and ask them if they will consider it. Um, I'm certainly willing to talk with the man, but if our, if our policy expires <clears throat> tomorrow, uh, we're probably going to have to <clears throat> uh, renew it at this point in time. And perhaps the insurer will uh, accept a partial premium payment. I don't really know. I, this, my involvement in this has been minimal, but perhaps that can be explored. But I don't know what else to tell you. It, it, if, it, if the lease requires the insurance, we're required to provide it. If the yeah, the, the main is, issue, on the, on the, the main issue property. is that. The main issue with the with the with the insurance is the bike trail. That was the thing that caused us the major hold that we were having a huge uh, huge struggle trying to find a carrier that would even cover it. We only were able to find one. <clears throat> what are these other towns around us using the cover for the trail if they're required to get insurance? So, Mr. Uh, yeah, Mr. Collins told me because I, I asked him that question. He said that most of the municipalities around us had master master insurance policies where they had a number of things covered, not just the trail. And, you know, they had a number of things in their policy. So they they don't splice it out uh, like kind of a la carte, like how we do it. Do we have no we have no general liability insurance. The liability insurance that we have purchased is for special areas that we've been given privilege to use, the metro lots uh, and the MWRD property. So I, I understand what Topeka is saying is most of the other communities probably have general liability for a number of things and whatever they whatever their responsibility is to the MWRD gets covered in some fashion under their general liability policy <clears throat> uh this is alderman johnson i kind of i don't uh, have to uh, i had, i kind of got to agree with uh freddie but freddie we've been uh up under that lease for for a moment but you know when we stepped into this uh cal sag trail a lot of these things that uh was unforeseen of course but uh, as one of the points i was bringing up um like three years ago about us looking at to another insurances you know compatible like with the other cities to give us you know right now a break because you know this COVID thing got you know us stressed as well as everybody else so i was looking into uh trying to get that done three years ago but the insurance company uh stated that they wasn't able to get the information they needed to be able to compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges i think you know with the neighboring cities as part of it you might need to ask them who who's covering them you know what insurance company is covering them maybe we could get a better quote you know but i, I agree with you freddie but we're in it for the um uh with the lease because it was for us to have extra land to do you know whatever but uh, with this Cal Sag thing, it, you know, it, it brought about uh, brought about a lot of things that we it was just quite unfortunate, and unseen. All right. Um, so, is there is there a motion to approve of item 
item A, since we kind of have to get this paid by, by I think Thursday's the third or Wednesday's the third. Is Chairman? Yeah, go Chairman, ahead. Um, uh, uh, is it possible for us to do like some, you know, to have the insurance and maybe do like a month to month until we can uh, uh, find out more about, you know, what M because MDWR do ask us for a lot of stuff, just like with that um, around that waterfall. We got to clean up and all kind of things to see if we could broker maybe a better deal. But I know we have only to the to the third, but if we can do something maybe month to month until we can try to, you know, figure something else out. Is that possible? I can not? look into that. I can look into that. Um, our agent is very responsive, so I can look into that. And I can follow up with you guys first thing in the morning. Topeka, you said we have an extension. How long is the extension? Yeah, he granted the extension um, so that our policy doesn't last on the current coverage that we have. And that goes until the third. So we're still covered until the third. And then after that, our, our policy will last. Well, the third is is um, Thursday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, if he can do some magic, but at some point, the the insurance under this particular lease, it, according to uh, what you've explained, uh, the lawyer from the MWRD told Mark Miller that insurance is going to be required. Uh, and if it's not, we're, we're in non-compliance with that component of the lease. I don't know the ramifications, but I'm, I'm just providing that as, as advice. Uh, we should probably seriously consider this particular placing this insurance and avoiding a claim by the MWRD that we've not complied with the lease, okay, I, because I don't know what the ramifications will be. I don't oh, believe I, I, I don't know who negotiated the lease, but it's a very common provision in the MWRD's leases to require uh, liability insurance. All right, thank uh, you, Terry. Can, can um, I ask you, Kevin, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah, go ahead, Alvin. So this would have to go to full council anyway for full council's approval, right? Yeah. I mean, yes. we're going to spend. Right. Yeah. So I mean, even if we approved it tonight, it's still got. It's going to be late anyway because we can't do that till next Tuesday at the earliest. So I, I, I kind of agree with you know if Topeka can get a hold of this person or whoever and see if we can start this month to month thing or whatever and at least get the ball rolling on this and try to renegotiate things like Fred said. <clears throat> Okay, I will follow up with you guys first thing in the morning. I'll send something out to Tom, and I'll, as soon as I hear something back, I'll update the committee. And it's more about renegotiating the lease with MWRD. It's not so much, I don't have an issue with having insurance. It's more of me just taking a stand at this point because I'm, I'm so frustrated as the alderman of the ward that these issues keep coming up without any real good explanation. And one commissioner says a different thing than another commissioner. And we're fine to have the farm there. We're fine to have the trail, but then you need to do this. And, it, and the legal team then gets involved. I'm just a no for anything to do with MWRD until I get more clarification. I don't think, I, I don't even know if I was an alderman when the lease was negotiated. I didn't like a lot of stuff I read back then. I remember bringing up when I did go through it that we're responsible to the water's edge. How can we, we don't have the equipment to maintain to the water's edge of Little Kelly and Met, let alone the Cal Sag. So the way that that wordage is in there, because Jim Polster confirmed it's in there. So whoever agreed to it and whatever reviewed it at the time failed to look at the small print of this. This is a 30 foot deep, 100 foot wide channel that we cannot maintain to the water's edge. So we're breaking the lease on a daily basis as it is. So I'm just a no, and I'm just being stubborn with anything that MWRD until I get more clarification. I'd love to reopen the lease for negotiation. I love the trail. I love the farm that was there, but it seems like we can't have everything. Everything they want, we can't do. The park district has an umbrella policy. The easiest solution would be, we don't want the lease at all. Let the park district lease it. They have an umbrella policy. They could just add it as like another park. You know, I believe our policy was like $10 million liability when I was on there. So through iParks. So there's a solution right there. Take us out of the game. You know, we're not in the parks and recreation business, is what I was always told for 
20 years of being involved in politics in town, yet here we are, we're in parks and recreation. So there's my rant. Hey, thank you, Alderman. Is there a motion to table this, son? Are we talking about tabling it until Topeka can give us an answer on this month to month thing or, or, or what? Uh, I think Karen? that I think my I'm I'm in favor of voting this through because I don't want us not to have insurance. I get I get Alderman Blotto's concerns about the lease. But before we run, we got to walk and I don't want to make sure we're we're not insured. Um, but I'm but whatever the majority of the committee wants to do, I'm I'll I'll obviously we'll go with it so um so if there's if there's a motion to approve or a motion to table uh we'll just go we'll go whatever way the majority votes someone needs to make a motion to approve and then if you can get a second then you can vote on it and that will get the matter uh It'll crystallize the matter. Um, my advice is to provide it. for the insurance. That's my advice because if you don't have it, then you're not in compliance with the exist the terms of the existing lease. But I understand what you're all saying, and it's a very expensive proposition. But then, insurance in and of itself <clears throat> is a very for a municipality is a very expensive proposition. And, and right now that you're all know, you all know, the city does not have uh, general liability insurance. So, but at least right, make I the will, motion. If you want to table it, you can table it. But if you table it, then you got You have to bring it back. Uh, if you want to just put it on the, on the agenda for the city council to consider uh, as a matter without your recommendation, you can also do that. Um, but sure. uh, you, you right. run the risk of violating the lease. Right. Thanks, Gary. Um, all right, I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Uh, 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 Chairman, can we approve and go like month to month so we can figure something out? Or are we just gonna approve I, to, I, just to go I, throughout the whole duration? I just so I, I, I don't know if that's an option yet. I'm just trying to get this this through. And as of what I was listening to Carrie is if we don't get a motion or a second on the motion, then we can make a motion to the table and it will give Topeka time to explore um, if that option is possible I'll, while we try and renegotiate a lease. Um, so Right. I'll make a second to your motion, Kev, uh, uh, Chairman. But like I... Uh, you know, I totally agree with Fred. We need to, you know, really dig into this thing. Right now, we don't have the time. You know what I'm saying? Because the third is what tomorrow or whatever. Yeah. So we have to move forward. But if we can move forward in paces and pieces, let's do so. You know, until we can figure this, get a better handle on this thing. Right. No, I appreciate that. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, so I made a motion to approve Alderman Johnson. Second, we need to do a roll call vote um, for approval. Alderman Downey's an I. Alderman Bellato. No. No, Alderman Clinker. Yeah, I hate being under the gun, but I'll, I'll say I just because we need the insurance. All right, and then Alderman Johnson. Aye. Aye, all right, that's three eyes and one no to approve item A. All right, thank you to Pika and Carrie for that. Uh, and then Tabika, could you still maybe just look, reach out to see if we could uh, we could go with this month to month uh, opportunity while we're trying to renegotiate or start renegotiating some of this lease? Yes, I will. And I wanted to make one more point uh, in reference to what Alderman Bellato stated about the park district. We did have a request out to the park district's president to see if we were able to combine our coverage with theirs. We, we haven't heard back from them. That's why I didn't mention it to you all, but we did, we did look into that option as well. So if I hear something back about that, I'll update the committee on that as well. And I have some background knowledge on that. I served in the park for 12 years. They're under an umbrella policy with every park district in the state. And a big caveat of that is it has to be leased by the park district or owned by the park district. There's no, um, it's umbrella policy, kind of like something we, we should hopefully one day, like Alderman Johnson said, have here. Every park district pretty much 
is all within the same umbrella, I parks insurance uh, umbrella package. And I know that we had to physically take over city owned vacant land. And I remember attorney Horvath probably remembers at one time, the city owned parks and the park district owned parks. The park district no longer could maintain the city owned parks like the ones in, on the south side or on the east side until we took ownership of them under our umbrella policy. So that's probably they didn't even respond to you because it, it, they already know it can't be done unless there was a lease oh, okay. from the FARD directly to the park district. Um, okay, that makes sense. To do it. Yeah. We had to do that. Okay. We had to annex those parks into the park district because they wouldn't be covered on insurance anymore. Okay, thank you. Thank you for providing uh, context and background on that, Alderman. Uh, all right, moving on. Next, uh, general legal expense. I really just wanted this for more informational purposes, just to see where we're at on this item. Um, if there's any questions, I'm sure we could ask to peek it out. But again, I was just doing this more for my own information uh, gathering. So if there's no questions, uh, we'll move on to item C. Item C is Liberty Flag and Banner Estimate. This is the 2020 Christmas decorations. I know Alderman Bellotto was real involved um, in the discussion and what the, the banners would be in the package. It just kind of laid out where the lighted ones would be and where the, the non-lighted ones uh, with the garlic, where was the garlic, with the, the red plastic wrap and bow ties on Old Western. Um, I don't know, Alderman Bellotto, if you want to just explain a little bit more since you were involved last year and this year again. And, this is, this is exactly, exactly what we did last year. Um, and again, we attempted to get prices to, um, just like last year, we were under the gun. We, we asked for prices like in May or June to purchase some. And at the time, they were back ordered. When we approached them this year, um, plants were shut down because of the pandemic. So we're in the same boat as last year. This is a lease only option, exactly what we did last year. It would cover the entirety of 119th to 135th, and then from 135th to 139th, the city would put up the ones we own that we've owned for a long time, just like we did last year. Um, it's up to the committee what they want to do. It pains me, even though the money's in this account, it is $10,000 for Christmas decorations. We did the exact same thing last year. Um, I think it is a nice thing to have. It's just, they're so old and beat up. And I just, I want to get some new ones for, you know, <laughs> the money's there for, but uh, I'm going to be a positive vote for this because I think uh, I've always been a favor of having Christmas decorations. It's just, I'm just committee why we don't own any of them. Um, and we weren't able to purchase any last year and we can't purchase any this year because of the same thing. So hopefully next year we can purchase little by little some of our own. So we're not constantly paying a company just to lease from them. Thank you for that. Yeah, maybe maybe right after like January, February. I've already, I already mentioned to the two companies that sell them around here that as soon as you get a catalog or something, send it to me. So probably within a few months, I should have something on, in my committee about this. So. All right, great. Uh, any questions from anyone else on the committee? Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, uh, what, what you said there wasn't any money, Freddie. No, there's money. This is this is business district funds. It just hurts because I don't like paying. As you know, Alderman Johnson, I'd rather buy a car instead of leasing a car forever. You know, so we keep leasing these decorations. We don't own them. And it, to buy them would be not much more to buy them, but we can't buy them because they're not selling any right now. So, okay, uh, that uh, that's the part I wasn't clear, uh, clear about. But I, I, I agree with you. I would rather buy them. But you know, with this COVID, we didn't have no Fourth of July. No, no. You know what I'm saying? We got to have something for the you know really for the morale of the city as well. But you know, if we can't get them, we can't get them. And I did have questions for that last. Uh, I mean, the third thing that was on on uh, the agenda, Kevin, with the general expenses for year to date was for uh, all the law firms or just uh, Montana Welch and and uh, Olison and Sturt. No, it looked like in yeah. the uh, on the, the in the pat in the packet and the memo to provide that there is a second document and it had a couple other law firms. I think that's just everyone who bills to that that line item was included. Okay, because you know I you know how I feel about the Tahoes being, you know, take taken, you know, by two law firms instead of just the one. Sure. I think so when looking when I when I looked at it earlier, I saw I saw three or four besides 
besides Oldelson and Montana Welch and uh, and um, the guy doing the Tahoes, there's besides them, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It looks like seven other entities or people, eight besides those three I mentioned at first. So it looks like 11 total are on here. I, I have questions on well, that too. Are we finished with the Christmas decoration thing? Uh, because I have questions. No, we'll, on... we'll throw, let's, let's do the Christmas and we'll just circle back. All right, I'll make a motion oh. for Christmas decorations. I, I, I'll sure. second that motion for the uh, decorations. And if we could have some folks help us out, you know, that might know a little more than we do, Freddie, um, you know, about trying to get them. Yeah. Sure. All right. Um, there was a motion by Alderman Bellotto, second by Alderman Johnson. We'll do a roll call vote. Alderman Donnie, who's an I. Alderman Bellotto. Aye. Alderman Clinker. Aye. And Alderman Johnson. Aye. All right. Four eyes. All right. Well, uh, let's look we're back to to item B, the general legal expenses, since it looks like there's a little bit more discussion on that. Said you had a question or a couple of questions. I have a couple of questions, Alderman Donahue. Go ahead. Um, so are we sure, Topeka, that like this is general legal? All of these are under general legal, or none of these law firms or billings would fall under the um, the liability, the the risk liability fund for legal? Yeah. So Denzin Denzin Salance, yeah. that wasn't a lawsuit or anything. Uh, let me look at it. Let me look at the I mean, that, activity report. Now, some of the, now some of them, yeah. So some of them probably can be offset to the to the 480 risk management account. Um, when I do an audit of the of uh, of the different accounts, I was looking at some of them that should be moved, but it wasn't illegal though. Most of the ones, uh, pretty much all of the ones that are billed there belong there. Now maybe the AP clerk might have made a billing error on maybe one or two of them. But for the most part, that that's correct. Yeah, but one or, two, one or two, one or two would equal uh, cause thousands of dollars, probably. Though it's uh, might, might be. But that's enough. what I'm saying. More, most, more than likely, it's not though. Go ahead. I could probably clarify a couple of these for Topeka. Uh, there's a there's a. I don't know uh, what Denzin Sultanzeda what they bill for, but. Malaro bills for the yeah. firm bills for the administrative adjudication. There was one bill for a Salzburg, Sally Salzburg. She was she represented the city in the in the Houston versus the city lawsuit. All right, so that could be Aronson and Wax is handling the bankruptcy matter for the city concerning uh, the Libby building and ARH, uh, Nagel is a court reporter. Maureen Nagel, she's a court reporter and her services have been provided at a couple of uh, hearings. And then Bethel, the Terry Bethel was an arbitrator who, who arbitrated a grievance uh, arbitration in, um, with respect to AFSCME and the city so those, all of those entries, with the, with the exception of uh, Denzin Zoltanzada, I don't know, and I don't know what they're for. Uh, so all those other entries are probably uh, could be moved from general legal uh, or or into another category, but uh, like the court reporter, for lack of anything better, she probably fits in there. Uh, and I mean, I would even argue that the ones that you just stated belong on that line. Denzin, uh, there's quite a few Denzin ones. Uh, I, I can't, Alderman Donnie, do you, do you, does anybody know what that's for? No, I'm, uh, I don't even recall I, seeing them often. There's, often. yeah, there's like at least seven or eight entries on here, probably a few, at least three, four thousand dollars. There are six entries. I, I, have, I have no idea what it's for. Uh, it could be for some. I don't know what it's for. I'm not but even going to try to guess. My point is, uh, just like uh, Attorney Horvath said, there's stuff that can be moved over, and it does still allow money in this line item. At the very least, we would know what we're dealing with. All right. Well, maybe. Well, what maybe I'm, if, what if I'm, if but what I'm saying to you, Alderman. 
Yeah, but what I'm stating to you, Alderman Bellotto, is for the most part, those are probably belong there. So even if I do move them, it'll probably free up like two or three thousand dollars, maybe. Most of those transactions probably belong there when I was looking at it. But I can go back and I'll take another audit. I'll I'll definitely take another audit, and I'll give you guys an updated one. Yeah, like Denzen alone is at least three thousand dollars. Topeka, I audited it as well. There are some yeah. there are some entries that should probably go into uh, litigation as opposed to general legal, but I can contact you on those. There's, it's probably within three to three to four thousand dollars. That's about it. Okay. Yeah. That's can what we I'm find thinking. out who Denzen is? Can we can we find out who they are? Because I like to know who we're paying. Hope it is not like a you know. Uh, a ghost or something. No, so those were just mistakenly. They were coded improperly, Alderman Johnson. Uh, they weren't. In other words, it was coded as general legal, and it should have been coded as litigation. Uh, but that's a very small portion. As I said, it's probably three to four thousand dollars of uh, coding mistakes, as opposed to additional law firms being paid anything. Okay, thank you. All right, well, thanks. If you guys just want to coordinate together um, so we could get a better picture of, of what's going on. Uh, any other questions on, on this before we move on to our final item? Yeah, all right, thank you again. All right, finally, uh, Police Department budget transfer request. Uh, in the, the memo Topeka provided, there was a line that went negative because of a request to move a body. Uh, this would move money from a different line to cover the rest of the year. Uh, was there anything else to peek up regarding this? No. So uh, the body removal services are, are $250 each time. And unfortunately, with this, with that type of service, there's no way to really predict how much it's going to be within a year. So at this, at, at the beginning of the year, we appropriated 4000 and it, it just wasn't enough. We've had a number of deaths. And so, because of that, this not, this sign item has gone negative. So we're hoping that we we're hoping that we won't have to use it, obviously, but we just want to have funds in that line for the remainder of the year in case it, we need to. Sure. No, I, I appreciate that. I know there was there was a question the one time when they were on the on the accounts payable the last time about why it was it was negative, but it's a good point that you can't predict. Um, right. How many times the service is going to happen? So, right. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, no, no, um, Chairman, from me. But I, you know, I was about to get into that business a couple of years ago, and it's like two fifty to remove the body because it's kind of like hazardous. Depends on the situation. But like you said, with this COVID and everything else happening, it's unpredictable. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Um, seeing that there's no questions, is there a motion to approve? This the police department budget transfer. I make a motion. Johnson. A second. Johnson at the second. All right. We'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Alderman Downey, why? Alderman Aye. Lotto. Aye. Alderman Clinker. Aye. And Alderman Johnson. Aye. All right. Thank you. Um, Alderman comments, concerns, just uh, I guess a housekeeping <laughs> item or two. Uh, I know we talked about having the ambulance ALS proposal, Chief Rita and Topeka are still, I think, working on that. So we should hopefully have it for our next meeting. It just seemed like it was a lot of information for them to gather. Uh, then second, because it's Labor Day next week, we're not gonna have a meeting next week. So our meeting, next meeting will be Monday, September 14th. Uh, that's all I have. Is there any other comments or concerns from the committee? Um, Can I ask I Alderman, uh, Lotto, when is your next meeting, Alderman? Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. It, it, it's the Wednesday after Labor Day? Yep. Okay, and because... You got something for me. I put the agenda usually together Thursday or Friday this week. Uh, we did receive a, a, an e, uh, a, a chorus, or I shouldn't say a correspondence. Kelly Burke spoke with the owners of the parking lot on Western, and I wanted to get that information to you so you can put it on your agenda for discussion okay all right no problem all right 
I got a, uh, um, I got a, a something that's on my mind, um, uh, Chairman um, Donahue, uh, sure, go ahead. about uh, about like our vacant properties and businesses that needs to be, you know, kept and you know, like as far as you know, landscaping, cutting the grass, and things of that nature, right? Because um, I know in in some cases that they're finding the property owners, but it still takes away from the fact that the neighbors or the residents still have to deal with, you know, the rats and the snakes and or whatever, you know, pests and things. And we can't, as a city, can't keep paying pest control people for negligence on, you know, homeowners or business owners' uh, uh, responsibility. So, you know, I was just bringing it up because it's a financial issue eventually. Sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and that's hopefully something the building department will continue, continue enforcing and maybe be more, more strict in some of their efforts with some of these properties that are always on the list or always kind of skirting, skirting the, the white, gray, black line of, of life. So, so definitely yeah. agree with you there, Alderman. Kevin, I, I'd like to jump in on that too. I'm not sure if anyone else is having problems, but I got a few in my ward that I've been reporting to the building department and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. So if anyone else has them, I'd appreciate if everyone just starts contacting them and letting them know, because there's, you know, like that Alderman Johnson just said, there's rats, there's all kinds of animals in some of these yards and, and they're atrocious and, and it needs to be taken care of. <clears throat> yep. All right. Um, I don't think I have anything else. If anyone else doesn't have anything, is there a motion to uh, motion to adjourn? Well, I don't make some motion. Clinker seconds. Second. Clinker, all right. Um, we'll have to do a roll call vote. Alderman Downey, why? Alderman Blotto. All right. Alderman Clinker. Aye. And Alderman Johnson. Aye. Aye. All right. Meetings adjourned at 6.44 p.m. Thank you, everyone, for your time, and uh, we'll see everyone at City Council next Tuesday. Have a good night. You too. Yep, bye-bye.